Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look in the Gulf again as Tropical Storm Cordiette starts to get its act together and gets ready to aim its sight on the Gulf Coast. Right now it's not at Tropical Storm strength yet, but the uh, National Weather Service has issued Tropical Storm warnings for Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida region. Right now it is at 30 miles per hour. The central pressure is 1,007 millibars and it's moving north at 9 miles per hour. Through the next 48 hours and 5 days, there's a high percent of 90% chance of forming. And right now, once again, it is tropical depression, and it's just getting ready to form into a tropical storm if it does form. If we move into the eastern Pacific, we also have another disturbance that is also has a 90% chance of forming. This most likely could become a tropical storm, if not a hurricane, due to a lot of warm water out there. But at this time, it doesn't look like to impact any regions of Mexico and California. And as we make our way into the Central Pacific, there is zero tropical cyclone activity forecasted in the next 48 hours. If we take a look at Cordillet right now, it is once again at 1,007 millibars, 30 miles per hour winds. These are knots, but they also combine into the storm strength, wind speed. And all these high top clouds where you see clusters of these, these are high cloud thunderstorms where these are the strongest parts of the storm where the heaviest rain is going to be. It's not may stay there once it gets up into Louisiana, but as of right now, these whiter clouds indicate heavier batches of thunderstorms. As you can see, they're all dispatched around. But most of the precip is going to be on the eastern part of this storm. As you can see, there's very little, if anything, clouds on the western side of the storm. So Texas and maybe western Louisiana could get very little rain out of this, but meanwhile, if you're by New Orleans, you could get maybe up to four to eight inches of rain. By Saturday, 1 a.m., it's just about to make landfall on Louisiana. If nothing changes in the next 36 hours, it should arrive by around 2, 3 a.m., if not 1 a.m. After it makes landfall, as you can see in these blue colors, these are tropical storm warnings indicated, I meant issued by the National Weather Service. And as it makes landfall, once again, the storm will weaken due to there is no tropical environment helping the storm to increase its strength and it's over land. So it will decrease, go down into tropical depression. Eventually, it will scoot off the coast of the northeast. But here's the question. Does this storm... You may not be able to see this, I'll change the color, but does this storm, once it makes its way out here, does it go out to sea, affecting nobody else, or does it stay up north, giving the northeast some rain, and possibly even some localized flooding? That is still on the table, as this storm is yet to make landfall, but as of right now, it looks like this storm will impact, obviously, the coastal gulf regions, and could drop significant, significant amount of rainfall. If we take a look at the GFS here, you can see on the bottom of the screen, eventually Claudiette does make landfall, but it is very weak according to the GFS. You can see, once again, a cluster of heaviest thunderstorms are off by Louisiana, the eastern part of the storm, southern Mississippi, and most southwestern parts of Alabama. And as we continue here, eventually the storm does get scooted off the coast. As the cold front does come, now, this cold front does play a big role. Does this cold front come in a lot slower, allowing this storm to go up the coast? Or does it come in a lot quicker, shoving this storm out to sea? As of right now, the GFS thinks the cold front comes in time and does eventually shove it out. But these are the total amount of precipitation forecasted by the GFS. Anywhere in this pinkish color is around two inches anywhere in this darker purple is four inches and anywhere in the yellow is seven eight inches you will have pockets of eight inches due to the heaviest thunderstorms but it most likely won't reach farther north than georgia and alabama so anywhere farther north than tennessee should be less than four inches but there always could be pockets of four inches or more in some areas and once again these yellows these scattered yellows are up to eight inches of rain. If we take a look at the Canadian model, the 12Z run, you can see on the bottom of the screen again, it does show the storm making landfall, but its bulk of the heaviest rain does scoot east of Louisiana, just barely, and makes its heaviest rain into the Panhandle, Florida, Alabama, and Mississippi. 
and eventually does get scooted off the coast, but it does bring it a little closer than the GFS to the coast of Northeast. As you can see up here, the coral front is coming down, eventually kicks this storm out to sea, affecting nobody else, and should become a fish storm. It could affect Northeastern Canada, but that's pretty much it from there, affecting the Northeast. And the total amount of rain, the Canadian wants to give a lot more rain to GFS. I could see this happening if this storm does get its energy together. The 2 inch line is a little bit more closer together, but it does look like that 8 inch rain is a little bit more widespread. You can see anywhere from the Panhandle, maybe the islands off of Louisiana could see 5, 6 inches, but mostly the bulk of the rain is going to be in Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and Panhandle, Florida, according to the Canadian model. This is not definite. This is just one run of the Canadian model. If you go back one run of the Canadian model, you can see it's a lot more rain, but it's more clustered up, and this run is more stretched out. If you take a look at the Icon model, I don't like to look at this model unless it's for winter sometimes, you can see it does bring that rain up into Louisiana, then eventually Mississippi, Alabama, then Panhandle, Florida. And then, as you can see, the storms does eventually get kicked out, but once again, it does bring it a lot closer than other models. This actually brings it to just south of Nantucket. Nantucket could see some rain out of this if the icon was correct. But, according to the icon, the bulk of the heaviest rain could stay offshore, unless you were in most southern parts of Louisiana. This could happen, but I really don't trust Icon, and according to the Icon, it looks like this 2-inch line is a lot closer together and less pockets of 5-6 inches. If we take a look at the European here, let me just go back a little bit. You see on the bottom of the screen, you do have Kodiak coming up, and eventually does make landfall, but this is the interesting part of the European. It does bring this storm a lot uh, farther offshore than some other models, but it looks like the icon when it comes to the track, but it does make it a lot stronger than other models. It does bring it close to hurricane strength, if not a strong tropical storm, but it is just south of Nantucket, so it shouldn't get that strong. The reason why it's doing it is because it goes through the Gulf Stream right up in here, where the temperatures are already near 80 degrees, so it does co convect that storm to strengthen it quicker. But as you can see here, this cold front does save the day for the Northeast and does eventually kick it out. If we go to the total amount of precipitation here from the European, you can see on the bottom of the screen, it looks like it wants to give the bulk of the heaviest precip this 10, 12 inches of rain just off the coast of Louisiana, which is always good. But it does give New Orleans, if this is New Orleans right here, I know it's around here somewhere, but New Orleans gets around 2, 4 inches. Southern Alabama gets 3, 5 inches. The Panhandle, Florida can get up to 6 inches. And Southern Mississippi can get up to 5 inches. But as you can see, once you get up to the north, it does have a lot of pockets of 5 inches here. Anywhere in this yellow is 4 or 5 inches. And anywhere in North Southern North Carolina could be up to 5 inches as well. If we take a look at WPC's forecast, you can see it does bring a lot more precipitation than the other models do. We'll go check back on the NAM after this, but you can see this 2-inch line is a lot... Um, excuse me, this 1-inch line is expanded a lot more. As you can see, it does take a track out here, according to the WPC. But it looks like, the, once again, the bulk of the precip is going to be southern than south of Tennessee. Sorry about that. This is the 2 inch line anywhere in this red that stretches out pretty far. And anywhere in this yellow here is 4 plus, which is also a big pocket from WPC, which I think it's a little bit too big, but it's okay. And anywhere in this darker yellow, when some pockets are brown, is 6 inches plus. So you're looking at anywhere from southern Louisiana, southeast Louisiana. Southern parts of Mississippi, south, uh, central and southern parts of Alabama, western part of Panhandle, Florida, and pockets of Georgia here. Even into some eastern parts of the mountains where you have higher elevations so you could have more precipitation. And once again, it looks like to take an offshore track. If we go back to the NAM here, sorry about that, if we go to the NAM... It does show a little bit more of an intensified storm. 
At least last time I checked. It does bring it down to 1,000 uh, stronger than other uh, models, but it does have a little bit more precipitation and does bring it more west than other models. As you can see, it doesn't even survive into once it makes it into central Mississippi. The storm dissipates and so does the precipitation. I don't think it'll be like that. I think you'll still have a lot of precipitation running around because you have the Gulf Stream. But the NAM does show eight inches no seven, eight inches in Louisiana, two inches in uh, Mississippi, Alabama, and also Louisiana. But after that, there's not much rain. This could be the remnants, you get an inch or two from this, but the NAM doesn't show that much rain. If you take a look at my forecast right here, you can see this is Claudia right here. Anywhere in this red pocket that stretches all the way from eastern parts of Texas, which could be a little bit too big of an area, but it's alright, all the way up into most southern parts of Tennessee and western parts of North Carolina, could is there's a chance that you could see excessive flooding. Anywhere in this yellow right here is the best chance to see four plus inches of rain. Not saying there could be pockets of 4 inches in northern Georgia or southern Arkansas. But there is a best chance of seeing 4 plus inches in this area. As you can see, WPC does agree with this. Because this track of the system, bulk of the precipitation is going to be to the east of the system. And this is the best chance of seeing the 4 plus inches. Now, once this storm gets off the coast... Does it eventually form back up and reform? Could it go up the coast, giving New York, Boston, Philadelphia some rain? Or does it just go off the coast and diddle that out its way out of here? I think this track is most likely going to happen. Some models the other day were showing this track more and more, but eventually backed off like the European. But I wouldn't rule out the possibility that it does split the mean between this and does go through here and does give Nantucket and Plymouth some rain out of this but I don't think it will be a big factor when it comes to rain for the parts of the Northeast. Thank you guys for watching I hope you all enjoy don't forget to like and subscribe and anywhere in the coastal regions of Louisiana, Florida, Alabama and Mississippi please stay tuned to this and watch your eyes this storm is going to make landfall in the next 36 hours anything could change the storm could weaken even more or dis uh, strengthen even more. I hope you have a good day and stay tuned.